It says in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth is out form and void. Darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the deep. God said, let there be light, and there was light. The Bible tells us in the book of John, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same as in the beginning with God. Through Him was all things made, and without Him was not anything made that was made. The Bible said that he has revealed himself by, through creation, showing that he is God. There's no scientific, astrological, astronomical explanation for creation. It's not there. They're still trying to figure it out. But you see, they spend billions of dollars trying to figure things out. If they just read the Bible, they don't have to spend all that money and waste all that time because it's, the Bible says it's clearly seen is the word that it is in creation. So God's clearly seen in creation. There's no explanation for why the sun is where it's at. Galileo, I think it was, said at one time that the earth was the center of the universe. You know what? Wrong. God said it in being. A lot of people talk about, and, and there's, a, there's a big hype right now about UFOs and all of this, and what about extraterrestrial beings and all of this, and uh, all of these things. Well, if you plainly read the Word of God, you'll find their spiritual powers in the air. Amen. Uh, it's, it's not hard to understand, uh, you know, forces that are there. You say, brother, do you not believe that there's uh, other worlds, the Bible said that he made the worlds. Well, if you read the Bible, you'll understand what it's talking about when it pluralized worlds. The Bible said the world that then was, speaking of Noah's day. And the Bible talks about the world that is now. And the world that is to come. Is that three? I mean, that's plural, right? So he made the worlds. Just read the Bible. You, there, there's a lot of answers to our questions in that book if we'll just read it. Amen? I mean, I believe there's worlds. One that was, because the Bible says it was, and it was destroyed by water. If it was destroyed, that means it ceases to exist. How many of you know we are now living in a world? Hey. So that's the world that now is. And the Bible speaks of it. And the Bible says the world that is to come. So that means there's another brother Bobby. So I, I mean that's three, plural, right? So is that properly stated when it says worlds? Yeah. Okay. Mystery solved. Correct? Amen. A lot of answers in there. We'll just read it, study it. Amen. Praise God. Now your Bible turn with us to the second chapter of the book of Romans this morning. Good to see all of you in the house of the Lord today. I was thinking, I was talking about, oh, how I love Jesus. And Brother Ethan mentioned some things, you know, going on in his favorite name. Do you know that there's 300 names given in your Bible that relate to Jesus? 300 names. Uh, and the Bible said he has given him a name which is above every name. That at the name of Jesus, it doesn't matter if you call him Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, it doesn't matter where you call him, Messiah, Emmanuel, God with us, you know, they all fit. But you see, all of those are just descriptions of what he really is. Amen. And God said, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. Amen. His name shall be called Jesus. And what was he going to do? Save his people from their sins. Amen. The Bible said we were at one time not his people, but now we are the children of God. Amen. Which made us not his people, but made us his children. Amen. It put a deeper emphasis on who we are than not being his people. Somebody say hallelujah right there. Amen. Praise God. Book of Romans this morning, if you have your Bibles, we've been studying over the past few Sundays out of the book of Romans. Probably will continue. Now, if there's something else that intrigues you and you'd rather study something else, just tell me. Uh, as long as it's biblical, we'll study it, all right? Uh, but uh, I just feel like that being the book of Romans is the book of established doctrine. There's some things in there that we need to understand. 
You see, whenever you look at your Bible, we understand the book of Romans is the book of established doctrine because it covers all the foundational doctrines that you and I need to know as far as biblical terms and Christianity and salvation is concerned. The book of Hebrews is the book of established doctrine as far as comparative doctrines of the law and of grace is concerned, and we need to study those to be assured. We look at the book of Timothy and the book of Titus and we find that those are books of established doctrine as far as, as home life and duties of husbands, wife, and children are concerned. And, and so it's all put together in a, in a book that's called the Bible and Bible actually means Bible, means two papers, so it's two books that are written. And it was the Old Testament that brought us to the New Testament, you see. The, broad, the Old Testament was shadows and foretypes and, uh, and foreshadows of what was to come. And thank God that it came. Somebody say amen right there. Thank God that it came. Because if it hadn't, you see, uh, and we'll study that in this book of Romans. But in the book of Romans, we studied about uh, established doctrine regarding the gospel and why that, that the gospel is so important to us. So we've already come through that. And Paul said, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is, put it in singular form, it is the power of God, meaning it accompanies nothing. That concreted it right there. doesn't need any accompaniment. Amen. It is the power of God unto salvation. That word unto means to bring you up against, to bring you to the door. It is the power of God unto salvation, to bring you to the enlightenment of it. Amen. It doesn't force you in, but it brings you to the enlightenment of it. Amen. The power of God unto salvation to those that believe. And see, we've already studied in the book of Romans that there are some that choose not to believe. They willfully are ignorant. We read about that in Romans chapter number 1, part of chapter number 2 in the book of Romans, how that the Bible said that they willfully are ignorant, how that, uh, that they came to the acknowledgement, they were enlightened to it, they were showed, because the Bible said in the book of Romans, for God hath showed it unto them. So you see these people that are out here, you know, downgrading, degrading, putting Christmas aside, wanting to be uh, skeptics and agnostics and, and declaring themselves to be atheists, and I don't believe in that. They willfully are ignorant because God showed it to them. God showed it to them. So you see, that's the reason that the Bible tells us in chapter number 2, listen to this. Because of the revelation that we found in chapter number 1, verse number 1 in the book of Romans of chapter number 2 says this, Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man. So can I look at every one of you in here this morning and say, you're without excuse. Now, let me ask you a question. Will you be honest with me? How many of you will be honest with me this morning? Okay. Even if it incriminates you, you'll be honest with me. Has, has anybody ever used the, the term just as a gesture and said, I'll bet you. Anybody? Okay. Uh, have you ever used this statement? I'd give anything. Well, now, would you? You done lied. If you wouldn't give anything for what you just said you'd give anything for, that makes you a liar. I'll bet you you're a forswear because what you're doing you're gambling on a statement regarding something that you have no power to produce. So now you're a, a swearing liar. I'd give my right arm to have that. Anybody ever said that? So now you're covetous. So now... You're a lying, swearing, covetous person. Oh my. Do we need to go any farther? How many ever ever text somebody or got a phone call and said, I'll call you right back? But they ain't got that call yet. Now you're a double liar. 
He said, Brother, how can you say that? Because a majority of you in here have told me that, and I ain't got that call back yet. <laughs> Even your pastor is the world's worst for it. <laughs> Come on, help me now. I'm just being truthful, right, Brother Brandon? So now we're more than just liar times one. We're liar times two. We're covetous. We're forswearers. Now we condemn the gamblers that go out here and buy lottery tickets and it's wrong. And the reason it's wrong is because it's an act of covetousness. But we condemn them for doing that whenever we're just as bad by wanting to give our right arm for something. Come on, help me. We'll, I'll dig you, hey, I'm going to dig you in a hole, but I've got to dig you in a hole before I can dig you out, okay? All right? Uh, how many of you ever use this? Gosh! Golly! Well, now you've done use the Lord's name in vain. I can't even sing Have a Holly Jolly Christmas. My convictions won't let me. Because he says... Oh, by golly, have a holly job. I can't do that because I feel like I'm using the Lord's name in vain. Where does God come from? Now, I can't do that. Maybe you can. I think too much of my God to take His name in vain. But now, if you say, say things like that and you slang words like that, you're taking the Lord's name in vain. <whistles> Why is it so quiet? I, ain't nobody shouting. Very few people saying amen, hallelujah, and glory to God. Thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art that judgest another. What are we doing? We're pointing our fingers at people that's doing the same thing that we're doing that I just showed you that you admitted. That judgest another, thou condemnest thyself, for thou that judgest doest the same things. Hello, can I get an amen? amen? And we're inexcusable. Amen, because we do the same things. Now, is there anybody here that don't do these things? You're perfect. Let me see you. I want to see, would, would, the, would, would the perfect people in here stand up? Oh, man. I guess dell has got his work cut out for him today, huh? I mean, we're guilty. We're guilty. And we find in verse number one, we're going to talk about judgment today. Sound doctrine regarding judgment. Might I say from what you've already witnessed to me, we all stand guilty in the judgment of an almighty God. We all stand guilty in the judgment of an almighty God. So in verse number one, we see the condemnation of judgment. Verse number two, we see the condition of judgment. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth. In other words, God's not going to say, well, I think, or I believe, or it's a possibility. The judgment of God is going to be in accordance to truth. Now, can I interject something right here, if you don't mind? Being I've all got us in a bad hole. I mean, we're in a bad place, Brother Bobby. Best I can tell from what that I've just already said, because I'm not talking to youngs, I'm talking to us. Okay? So don't feel like I'm isolating you and putting you out there and saying, you know, you know. I, I'm not. We're human. We're but dust. He knows our frame, but we're but dust. And I want to say, outside of Jesus Christ, we're in a mess. Now, I have a lot of people, and please understand what I'm fixing to say, and there's some things that I need to clarify. There's a lot of people that ask me, and you that's been around me a while know better, preacher, are you eternal security? You know better. Just because I quote the Scripture in the book of 1 Timothy, which says, For I am not ashamed 
For I know in whom I've believed, and am persuaded that he's able to keep that that I've committed to him against that day. Just, I hope, makes you understand that my power to live right, be saved, and stand before God is not in me. And please don't be so narrow-minded to judge somebody that's quoting Scripture. I mean, Brother Brandon, I love you, brother, and I believe you're dedicated, and I believe you're 100% real, but you can't make it. You know the Bible, but your knowledge of the Bible, won't, it, it won't get you through. Brother Bobby, I appreciate the touch on you and your knowledge of the Word of God and what God's done for you in the past few months, brother, but your knowledge of the Word of God won't bring you through. It'll, it'll make you stand, but it won't bring you through. You've got to have Jesus. And I'm glad to say this morning, I'm not trusting in me. And I'm trusting in Him. Amen. I know in whom I believed. And I'm not ashamed to stand here and tell you, I know in whom I believed. And I'm persuaded. That he is able to keep that that I've committed. And you see, that's the key right there. What have you committed to him? Oh, I could go back out here if I wanted to and run with the world. Yes, I could. But there's something on the inside of me that's got a hold of the reins. Can somebody say hallelujah right there? Yeah. I mean, for, for, for God to, to, to take us and to say, you ain't going nowhere, that's forced service. God don't want forced service. Brother Bobby wants you to serve Him because you love Him. How many of you can say, I serve Him because I love Him, not because I have to? I serve Him because I want to, not because I have to. Amen. You see, the Bible <coughs> tells us in 1 Peter, that we need to commit our soul unto Him for safekeeping. I've done that. Does that mean I can't turn to the vomit and the mire? No. doesn't mean that. Does that mean I'll stand all right before God if I do turn to the vomit and to the wallowing in the mire? No, it doesn't give me any guarantee. I've told you, I'm already guilty in judgment. And you've already admitted you're guilty in judgment. Amen. Jude says he's able to present us blameless before the Father. I believe that. How can he present us blameless before the Father if we stay in him and we're presented to the Father in the person of Jesus Christ? You can't be presented to God in the person of Annette and make it. You'll go to hell. You can't be presented in the person of Bobby and make it. You'll go to hell. <laughs> so can I say this morning, Jesus is my only hope. And if I'm not presented in the person of Jesus Christ, and if he don't, when he looks at me, if he don't see the blood of the Lamb, I'm lost. Amen. That's just as plain as I can put it. So why do I love him and why do I put so much confidence in him? Because I can't make it no other way. No other way. It's already said I'm inexcusable. How many of you ever looked at somebody and said, well, you know, they're low down, sorry, no count, good for nothing, rotten sinner. Look at what they're doing. <laughs> I guess we all have men. But what could they really look at us if they knew our life and took every little grain of thing like I've already mentioned it and brought it up in our life? What could they say about us? That's the reason we need to have compassion, amen, because we're in the same condemnation. That's what the Word of God says. So we see the condition of, of judgment. It's in truth. You can deceive me and make me think you're a pretty good person. Really down deep, I know none of us are. We try. Can somebody say amen right there? Paul said, I've not yet attained. Brother Brandon, I've not yet attained. But I'm striving for that mark. 
And God knows my heart that I'm striving for that mark. Amen. Look at what it says. Not only, but look at the conclusiveness in judgment. Verses 3 and verse 11. Verse 3 says, And thinkest thou this, O man, that judgest them which do such thing, and dost the same, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? In other words, just because we can take ourselves and put ourselves on a little higher plateau than what? Oh, okay, you know, David, he does this. I'll just use you, brother. I've used these others. I don't want you to feel left out. Or John, I don't want you to feel left out. You know, I said, well, you know, David does this, and I don't. I'd never do anything like that. Or John does this, I, I'd never do anything like that. You see, the way we justify ourselves is putting somebody a little bit lower than we are so we look better. Come on now. But the Bible says if we compare ourselves with oneself, we're not wise. If you compare how spiritual you are by how unspiritual somebody else is, that's just not too smart. We need to compare ourselves spiritually to Jesus. Amen. And then we'll understand just how spiritual we really are. Amen. Is there anybody in here this morning that can say right now, Lord, have mercy on me? Amen. But the Bible tells us, listen, <clears throat> that we're not going to escape the judgment of God. Look at verse number 11. For there is no respect of person with God. He's speaking about judgment here. And you're going to be judged for just exactly what you are, and so am I. Amen. So we see the conclusiveness of judgment. The Bible tells us in verse 4 and 5, Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and longsuffering, not knowing the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance? But after thy hardness and impenitent heart, treasurest up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. Look at what it says right there. Despisest. This word despisest, now there are more, this word is used more in your King James Version than this, but this form of it is only used twice in in your Bible, in, in this form of Greek. And it means to think against or lightly esteem. Now people that come in and they pray and supposedly get right with God, and maybe they do, and then they go out and begin to live like the world and live as they once did or not be dedicated, then really, according to the definition of this word right here, they really despise or lightly esteem what God's done for them. Now, I look at what God saved me out of, but I look at what God saved me from. God saved me from a life of drug addiction. I've never taken drugs. He saved some of you out of it, but He saved me from it. He saved some of you out of a, <clears throat> out of a life of alcohol. He saved me from it. Some of you were alcoholics. He saved you out of it, but He saved me from it. Some of you had a permissive lifestyle. He saved you out of that permissive lifestyle, adultery, fornication, and all that. He saved me from it. So what can you say? Well, he saved you out of it, and he saved me from it, so we're both saved in the same category. Come on, now help me. Amen. He doesn't look at you any different than he looks at me. Doesn't matter how deep you've gone, Brother Homer, Brother... Brother Jim, it doesn't matter how deep you've gone. Brother Taylor, it doesn't matter. We're saved. Somebody else ought to say hallelujah just one time right there. Praise God. Amen. Because that's what the word... But there's some that they just, they take it so lightly, being saved. Listen, whenever I look at these meth addicts and everything out here, I went into Palm Shelter last week and saw a guy come in and he was willing to trade everything that he had, sores all over his face. You can tell what he was. It don't take much to identify a meth addict. And he was willing to give up everything that he had. He was a carpenter. And he is willing to sell everything that he had just to make it one more day. Been there. Just one more day because, you know, if I can just get enough to get me through today. Well, what are you going to do tomorrow, brother? Yeah. 
Makes me feel like stopping and singing when I look around to see all the good things he's done for me. I got so much to thank him for. Anybody else in here that way this morning? But to know, Brother Brandon, God saved me from being that person. He didn't save me out of it, but I'd run around this church and shout, thank God, look what he kept me from. Amen. Amen. I mean, that's a God. And, and then, hey, when I sing, oh, how I love you, Jesus, that's what I mean. You say, that's not the song. That's the way I sing it. Amen. It's personal to me. Amen. But we see here, despise us thou, to, to think lightly or to think against. Look at what the Bible tells us it's going to be, the cause and judgment. The Bible said, who will render to every man according to his deeds. But he made me do it. But she made me do it. Well, that don't matter. She'll be judged or he'll be judged for making you do it, but you're going to be judged for doing it. Doesn't matter our profession. We're going to meet everything we do in judgment. Everything the Bible tells us that every idle word <laughs> that's bad. <clears throat> Somebody help me now. You say, well, brother, uh, you know, if, if judgment's going to be that strict and stringent, can I say something without you really feeling bad at me? There are certain things you don't do if you're a Christian. And there are certain things, if you profess Christianity, where you have had an experience with God or haven't had an experience with God, if that thing is active in your life and you die in that condition, you will not go to heaven. Okay? How do you know that? I read the book of Galatians. And I read the book of Ephesians. And I read the book of Corinthians. And I, I found out that these things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Somebody say amen right there. So I really don't take into light your profession. I'm a preacher I've saved a hundred years ago. I just got kind of caught up in the bottle. Well, sorry. Well, I just got caught up in this affair. Sorry. I mean, I respect your profession. Maybe you did have an experience with God. But can I say to you this morning, there's not a person in here that's not susceptible to falling into those same condemnations. And the only thing that will keep you from falling into those condemnations is Jesus Christ active in your life with the power of the conviction of the Spirit of God in your life to say, Homer, don't do that. To say, John, don't do that. But you know what? Just because he says don't... How many of you have ever overridden the convicting, speaking power of the Holy Ghost to God? Well, that shows you where your security is. Your security is in obeying through His power what He instructs you to do. Did I make that clear? I'm kept by the power of God. So what is the power of God? The power of God, Brother Brandon, is that spirit that moves in you. It says, Brandon, don't go here, don't right. do that. Mm -hmm. That's the power of God that keeps you. Somebody say praise God right there one time. Amen. My confidence is not in you. My confidence is not in Dale Wheeler's preaching to keep me or to save me. My confidence is in what God does, can do, and has done in my life and will do in my life. Paul had another persuasion. That principalities and their powers... nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate me. But you know what? Paul didn't include self in there. I'd like to take about two services and go into this real deep sometime. Amen? I would. Paul said, and no principalities, no powers, no things present, no things to come, no height, no depth, nor any other creature. Now, wait a minute. If you say any other 
creature. What are you doing? You're isolating yourself. Brother Taylor, if you say nobody else, then that means you're here and nobody else is there. Okay? Am I right? I mean, is my philosophy correct in this? Paul didn't say me or any other creature. You can't make me fall. You can't make me sin. You can't make me backslide. You can't make me turn away from God. You big old boy, I wouldn't even try. But you know what? Ain't nobody in here that can make it. Well, look at Stephen. He was judged before the Sanhedrin. Paul was there, laid his coat at the judge's feet because that's what, whenever he took his coat and laid it over at the judge's feet in Jewish Roman law, because that's what it was, it was a corrupt law. If I took my coat and laid it at John's feet, say, Brandon and John was at odds, and I was a mediator or an instigator or a witness or whatever, I didn't have to say a word. I just took my coat off and went over and laid it at John's feet. That means Brandon's guilty. He's right. So that's what Saul at that time did. He laid his coat at the feet of those that were judging Stephen. Now look, Everybody was against it. He had no one standing with him that day. But there wasn't enough Jewish law, enough Roman law, enough stones in the streets of Jerusalem to separate Stephen from the love of God. Same way with Paul. Paul, much learning to make thee mad. Look at Felix and Festus and Agrippa and all them. But there wasn't enough power or authority in three major rulers to separate Paul. But you know what Paul said? He said, in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. Paul said, I don't even know how to perform what's good. Amen. Are you understanding where I'm going this morning? Nor any other creature. <clears throat> Be like me saying, the rest of you, that leaves me here, you there, puts me, you see, if and or isolation, let me give you a, a bit of something that will help you. Whenever that you put all inclusive everything and don't include yourself, then that is what they call isolation. Okay? If when used in the Word of God, puts whatever that you are referring to with if in that statement, it puts it on a conditional platform. If it clouds up, it might rain. It is not going to rain with the blue sky and the sun shining. So that puts rain coming in on a conditional platform. It's got to cloud. How many of you know it does? We do have to have clouds for rain. Okay? <clears throat> you say, well, brother, you know, there's, there's some things that's, you know, it's sin that we're kind of ignorant in. Well, let me ask you a question. Just because that you're ignorant of something, that that's, does that make it not sin? Okay? I go home, I lay down this evening, tonight, I go to sleep. There's a bear comes through my woods. I don't know it's there. Does that make it not a bear? You'll get there in a few minutes. I'll help you understand it. What are you saying? It's still a bear. We want to call things that we do faults and failures and mistakes and I didn't know about it. But it's still something that we need to acknowledge before God of our inabilities and our fallibilities and our flaws ability and say, God, I realize... Hey, 
I realize my weakness. I realize my inabilities. I realize in me is no good thing. Don't ever start thinking of yourself too highly because a man ought not to think of himself uh, you know, any, uh, uh, any higher than he really is. And when you start really thinking about yourself no higher than you really are, you're going to understand that you're way down on the pole. And I'm way down on the pole. And we need Jesus. That's what I'm trying to help you to understand. We're going to judgment. Every one of us is going to judgment. And we need Jesus. We got to do the best we can because we're going to meet everything we do and everything we are when we stand before an almighty God and we need Jesus. Can I go on this morning? Am I depressing you yet? Amen. So the cause of judgment is our deeds. Look at number seven, the conclusion in judgment. To them who by patient continuance in well-doing, patient continuance in well-doing, What does it mean to continue? Keep on keeping on. In patient continuance in well-doing, seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. Amen? The conclusion in judgment. Amen? I'm seeking, that's what I'm seeking for is eternal life. I'm seeking, hey, to honor God and to live for Him. I ain't get much to start. I prayed this morning. I said, Lord, listen, if you could see fit to send the power of the Holy Ghost by and shake and stir and revive the church, that's fine. But if you see a need that your word be shared, then let it be so because either way it's the will of God and the anointing of God. And Hey, it ain't all in a shout. Sometimes we need to come to the realization of what the word of God's telling us because that's the way we grow. Amen. And it takes calm weather sometimes to sow seed. Right, Brother Brandon? And put out straw too, brother. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Listen. Look at verse number 10. Then we'll come back to verses 8 and 9. But glory and honor and peace to every man that worketh good to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. How can we have peace in God? Listen, if you can look at your life and know that you're doing the best that you possibly can, even with your faults and your failures and your and your bucket full of stuff that you know is not right, but you can have peace with God knowing you've done your best. <clears throat> Honey, am I perfect? Not by a long shot. <laughs> and I've been working on it for 50 years with her. And she still looks at me and says, not by a long shot. Is there anything in my life you have to overlook for us to live peaceably together? She ain't saying nothing, but she's shaking her head like this. <laughs> Do you know I love you, baby? Mm-hmm. Do you know I try to please you? Mm-hmm. So therefore, she don't kick me out. Even though I got an empty dog lot, she don't put me in it. Why? Because she knows my heart. I'm trying. Now, if I wasn't trying, she couldn't say that. But you see, God knows that every one of us was formed in the image of Adam and we still have an Adamic nature in us. And it is a daily crucifying of the flesh to overcome that Adamic nature in you. A daily crucifying of the flesh. Now, I live victorious, but I get up every morning knowing i got a problem, and right here he is. Amen? Okay. Let's go on. So look at what it says in verses 8 and 9. But unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation and wrath, tribulation and anguish. He said those that do these things, he said tribulation and anguish is going to be upon that soul. That doth evil to the Jew first and also the Greek. He said, don't matter who it is, Jew or Greek. He said, whenever you do these things, tribulation and anguish is going to be upon you. And I'm going to have to quit, but I've got to, go, I've got to do this. They're not through quite yet. And forgive me for overrunning. But the Bible tells us, listen, the law is our standard for righteousness. Moral righteousness is written in the Levitical law. That is your standard of righteousness. Can I tell you something? The Bible says there can't nobody attain to that. So if you are measured up by the law, 
Are there any lawbreakers in here? Anybody do anything yesterday? You broke the Sabbath. Sunday's not the Sabbath. The reason we as Christians gather on Sunday is because we celebrate the resurrection. We do not revere the Sabbath. The Bible says the Sabbath was made for the Jew. That's what your Bible says. And when Jesus became our high priest, he brought in a better testament, a new law, and a different covenant. Somebody say hallelujah right there. Amen. That's what your Bible says now. I'm King James. Amen. The Bible said where there's a change of priesthood, there must also of necessity be a change of the law. What did he do? He took us from the law of bondage and put us in the perfect law of liberty. Somebody say hallelujah right there. It said also of necessity, Brother Bobby Suttles. Of necessity. In other words, he could not operate with grace under Levitical law. He ushered in the age of grace so he had to change the law. And what did he do? He took the heart of stone and the tables of stone out of your heart and he wrote a new law on the fleshly tables of your heart. Can anybody hear what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Amen. <clears throat> so the law is a standard for righteousness in the realm of God. No man can attain unto the righteousness of the law. Listen to this. Verse number 16, and I'll close. We'll come back next well, a couple or three Sundays, whenever I'm up again. Look at what the Bible says in verse number 16, and I'm closing. What I told you earlier, okay, we brought us all into condemnation, all into sin, all realize that everything that we do and the things that we do is going to bring us into condemnation before God. In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. Judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ. What are you saying? He's saying he's going to look at you in his righteousness, not yours. Amen. It does not exclude the fact that we need to live right. It does not exclude the fact that sin is still going to be judged. It does not exclude the fact that some folks think that they're all right living in sin that the Bible plainly tells us is not going to pass judgment and make it into heaven. So regardless of your profession, if you're living in one of the 16 things mentioned in the book of Galatians, you ain't going to make it if you die in those things. Okay? That's what the Bible says. Nor the same. I give you last Sunday and Sunday before last 23 things in the book of Romans chapter number 1 that if there are any, you ain't going to make it. Regardless of your profession. But I was baptized a long time ago. I was too. But I'm not going to make it on that baptism. I'm not going to make it on that profession of faith. I'm going to make it through the blood of Jesus Christ and my striving to live in accordance to what the Spirit of God leads me to live. Amen. And on that day, whenever all the crowns are handed out, it ain't no wonder that we're going to be able to bow. Pull that crown off that's handed out and throw it down at Jesus' feet. I had a song a long time ago I was given a CD because I said something about liking the song. None of the rest of the songs were worth having on the CD, but there was one. It's talking about when they stood in judgment. And it said, all I saw was one holy God and a pile of crowns. <laughs> Hallelujah. One holy God and a pile of crowns.
from what I've shared with you this morning, you understand why that if I'm handed a crown on the day of judgment, it'll have to go at Jesus' feet. Because there's nothing in me. There's nothing in me. There's no power nor ability in me. And on that coronation day, when we crown him, he'll have a crown on his head as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And all the crowd crowns. And we want to say of the worthy, but I want to change that just a little bit and say of the unworthy. We'll be laying at his feet, Brother Brandon. One holy God and a pile of crowns. Because in judgment, Jesus is all that's going to matter. I hope you receive something from the lesson this morning.